Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, welcome to another amazing screencast, Garage Edition. Uh, so yeah, I'm hanging out in the garage, uh, shooting a quick video. Um, so if a car drives by or something like that, uh, the cat pounces on me, deal with it. Um, so you guys are gonna get going on a Google Drawings uh, project. Now, depending on your class and depending on how often I reuse this, um, the, the project will vary, but this is meant to be uh, just kind of the intro to Google Drawings and how it works. Um, I will make a quick side note and tell you that I absolutely love, love, love Google Drawings. I love it. Um, I use Google Drawings for a ton of things. Uh, the reason I use Google Drawings is because it's an, an amazing blank slate. Um, pretty much... Uh, you can create anything and everything on a Google Drawing, um, and it's very free form, and then it embeds really cleanly uh, when you're done, um, you know, with that project. And it'll go on a website or custom buttons, you name it. It's great. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive into Google Drawings. Um, this is going to be some of the features again, uh, but ultimately we are just... Uh, scratching the surface of what you can get done in Google Drawings, okay? Let's take a look. Okay, so here we are in Google uh, Drive. Um, you should have here on your Drive home screen, you should have a geography folder. So if you do, open it up and create your document in there. Right, so I'm gonna come down to New, More, and select Google Drawings. The first thing I wanna point your attention to is the untitled drawing. Rename that. Give it a proper name, okay? The second thing we should take a look at is this square. This is your canvas right here. It's got the checkerboard background, so you know it's transparent. We can uh, change that later. But let's talk about the actual square itself. Right now it kind of fits pretty well. For a variety of reasons, you may want to change that at a certain point. So you come down to Page Setup. Uh, right now, standard 4x3, that's like your standard like picture. Uh, widescreen 16 by 9 that's like a computer or a TV screen. Um, custom, let's jump down here to custom. So right now it says inches. So it says width is 10 and height is 7.5. So you know what we could do is go 8.5 by 11 and that creates a, a page. Here's a printable page. So if you wanted to take this and print it out, that's ex exactly what you would do. Um, because you are probably going to end up putting this on some type of website or digital por portfolio, I would absolutely recommend uh, that you do longer than wide. There might be a scenario where if we come in here, there may be someday for whatever random reason, you might want something that's really wide. Okay, so now that's uh, 22, so 11, two pages by eight and a half, and now you've got this really wide thing, so if you wanna do a timeline or something like that, that could work. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and say stick to portrait, because it'll end up on your website a lot cleaner, okay? So we're gonna go 8.5 by 22. So eight and a half by 11, that's one page. Eight and a half by 22, uh, that is two pages. It's not going to print very well, uh, but this is something that you could then take and put on your website nice and long. Okay, so if at any point you decide that that's you know, too long or too short or whatever, uh, you can always change it in the page setup, but there's also this little icon down here in the bottom corner. If you uh, click and drag that around, it'll reformat it, just kind of more of an, a freeform method. Okay, let's talk about the background, okay? If you want to change the background color, you can. Simply double click on the, uh, forgive me, simply right click on the background itself. You can select a color like so. That is a solid color. You can come up here to a gradient color and pick something like that. Uh, and we're, we're going to leave that for a second, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm going to show you a different option in just a minute. So if you want a text box, you simply click on that and drag to wherever you need the text box and you can add your text like so. 
Now take a look here. This is really small. I can barely see that. But if you click on it, that's actually 14 size font. So even though it's really small on your screen, the font's actually fairly big. You know, if you think of like a standard, you know, essay, that's a 12 point font or even 11 point font sometimes. So 14 size font, and that's really small. So remember the scale, okay? So right now, this looks really small, and the instinct is to obviously then make the text bigger. But when you go and put it on a website, that's when it ends up looking way too big, okay? So as you're editing, I really encourage you, just work with this zoom toolbar, okay? So when you click on that magnifying glass, and you click over here, you can actually zoom in and work on just certain sections at a time. If you ever want to zoom back out, it's a two finger tap and you can zoom way out. Okay, one last thing, if you click on the drop down arrow, there's a lot of other options right here. Uh, the one that you probably want most often is the fit option and that'll bring it back to its uh, normal view. Okay, so now that you got the zoom feature all figured out, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other options for inserting uh, some content. Okay, so obviously we've got the text box that we just talked about, uh, but right next to it are objects. If you ever want, you know, uh, some kind of uh, banner or call out or something along those lines, you could insert something that looks like so. Um, anytime you see this little uh, uh, diamond. Uh, down here, it means you can change the direction of things. You know, that's true for other objects uh, within this. Uh, you notice that when you highlight this, there's all kinds of other very, uh, various options that pop up. You can actually type directly in these by uh, double clicking. Uh, so don't, don't forget about that option as well. You can change the, the color. Now we're starting to get into my Point Loma days. So that's another option for you. Uh, if you want to insert lines, uh, they're all here. One of the things that I'll point out to you guys uh, while, while you're here is the polyline tool. Uh, if you ever want to make like a, a weird shape, you can. And all you have to do is come right back to your starting point and it'll actually create that, that custom shape for you. If you double click on it, you can edit all the points as well. So uh, you can get as creative as you like uh, creating all your custom shapes. And then that way it actually, um, uh, you get a lot of those same editing features. You've got one other option that I want to mention before I start talking about images. Uh, you've got diagrams and word art, okay? So a diagram, you can actually choose uh, various, you know, timelines or, um, various other options all through here and that'll kind of help you make flow charts or anything like that. Uh, word art. Um, word art is cool because it gives you a few more options as far as like fill colors and things like that. So you can see you can reshape it however you want. You can change the font but you can also change the fill color so if you ever wanted to uh, you know, we're short on options for meme making. You can uh, you can actually make one within Google Drawings as well. Uh, things like that. Okay, so the word art option is is pretty um, pretty useful. So let's move on and maybe delete some of these. Let's talk about images. Okay, so there's a few different ways to get images on your actual uh, drawing itself. Uh, one such way is actually just come right up here into tools and go to explore. It's going to bring up a sidebar right here and you can actually do an image search uh, uh, through uh, obviously Google uh, right here. So if I went Abe Lincoln um, images, I can pull up images right here and drag them in like so. Here's one of Abraham Lincoln, whatever you're looking for. There it is, and actually comes with the citation as well, so that's kind of convenient. Um, if you are maybe kind of limited by this, obviously you've got Google Drive, you can bring that up in Google Drive as well. But if you're feeling a bit limited by that option, uh, you can actually just open up a new tab, 
do a search in your Omnibar, and you'll get the pretty much that same uh, list of images. But you know, we go with something like this, and we do that again. So all I did was I clicked on the image. Okay, let's go full size. So here's our image here. All I did was click and drag up to this tab and then drop and there it is. Now it's not going to give you the same citations. You see how the link stayed in here, but it is a good option. There are some other options in here if you wanted to um, resize it. Let me see here. We can put a drop shadow on it. So you can see that that drop shadow is uh, appearing behind it. Okay, you can make it a little bit blurry. So there's those kind of options. All right. Uh, there's one last thing that here's a cool trick that um, that might be useful for you. If you are not super excited about the uh, options as far as uh, background colors go, a good option is to actually come up here and look for um, uh, gradient backgrounds in here and there's a lot of really good options so let's say that you wanted to go you know with something kinda of wild like that or something like so same story just drag it up here okay now this is not gonna become your background but what you can do is bring it up here into one corner okay and I've made it full width okay and this looks crazy because it is huge but bear with me I got something cool going okay there it is so now this will basically work as our background and, and that gives you a nice clean kind of aesthetically pleasing looking uh, background color. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking how is this video still going on and I apologize for that but there's just so much to learn about Google Drawings. It's amazing. So there's only two less things I want to go over and they are a little bit related. So the first thing I want to talk about is how you can hyperlink anything. You can hyperlink text, you can hyperlink objects, you can hyperlink images. Uh, this is a super, super useful tool. I use it all the time. Okay, so I'm going to insert um, just a an object. There we go. Let me see here. Uh, no. Yeah, much better. Okay, so we've got our happy face and uh, let's make him there we go. Classic happy face, okay? Okay, let's insert another uh, word art. Hello. Okay, so we've got two different objects here, and it works either way. So what you can do is when you select that object, you go uh, Control K, and there's the link. You can go Google.com. All right, we'll do the same over here. Control K, Google.com. All right, one last thing. If you wanted just a certain text within a text box. So uh, let's zoom in a little bit more here. All right, and we just want this one word within the actual text box. Uh, we select that, highlight it, the same keyboard command, uh, Control K, Google when you get to a drawing, you can see now that that, that uh, hyperlink pops up in that little bubble like so. And when you click on the text box, there it is. Okay, it's not the cleanest right now, but let's talk about what happens when we put something like this on a website. So let's take a look at that. The first thing I want to do when I put on a website is I want to make it public on the web. There might be a lot of people looking at this and we want to make sure that it's available to them that it's not just going to be a blank screen. So I'm going to uh, go to the, my share button in the top right. I'm going to change this from anyone in the from restricted beyond just the Grossmont Union to anyone with the link 
is a viewer. Okay, done. Now I'm going to come up to my website. You guys have a digital portfolio. This is my school website. It's just a sample page. Let's come up here and go to insert from drive. Okay, mine's in the very front. Yours should be in your geography folder. And I click insert. And right now, it's really, really small. So let's fix that. This is a little bit, this is one thing about uh, Google Sites that I wish was a little bit more functional. You kind of have to do a drag and scroll kind of scenario and get it sized to how you want. And there it is. It's quite long, but that's kind of intentional, right? Isn't that what we said that um, this can give you kind of a full length thing? So there it is on our website. Okay, here's the magic. Let's hit publish. Make sure you're publishing frequently. Whenever you make changes to your website, you want to hit publish so it goes live. I drop this down, view published site, and there it is embedded on my website. It looks nice and clean. It's got a bit of a border around it, but that's okay. Whenever I click on these, okay, I can click on this and it'll pop it out, the, the actual drawing out to a new window. Okay, there it is. And all my hyperlinks work. So it takes me to Google each of the time. So anytime you want to like say like create a button that says click here to see the article or click here for more information or whatever like that, uh, hyperlinks are a really, really good option. Uh, the way Google Drawings work with Google Sites, uh, it's, it's a match made in wherever. All right, and that's embedding. Okay, uh, I didn't really go into much about like cropping, but I actually have a whole separate YouTube uh, video simply on cropping uh, within Google Drawing. So I'd really recommend you go watch that one. This is just the surface of what uh, is capable in Google Drawing. So I really ex encourage you to explore. And thanks so much for watching this long video on Google Drawings.